Your dreams will come true if your mind isn't glued to the fact that life is so blue. Hi there, it's Sandy uh, and Oliver, and welcome to the Sandy and Friends podcast. So I'm going to be interviewing <laughs> one of my idols, Steve Axfell. So welcome. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so exciting. Is it true that I am your first guest? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so are you. So um, <laughs> this is this is your creator here. My father. Uh. <laughs> Hello, Oliver. Uh, hi there. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, well, uh, again, you, you knew me. You knew me. Uh, uh, I stitched you, you together <laughs> <laughs> before you shipped. And I didn't even know that. That's pretty wild. Well... <laughs> You don't really come to life until the hand of the performer goes into you and makes you come alive. Mother? Ah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited. I have some questions to ask you. Uh, I right, have some questions. All right, he's going to ask you the questions. I have seen so many things on your website that you've created between puppets and all the magic things that you make, so... What was the first thing that you can remember creating? Wow. <laughs> the very first thing I can remember creating was a um, a robot made out of blocks when I was three. <laughs> that is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. I started out making, making uh, robots and men out of Legos and blocks and all kinds of different things. And uh, continued to grow up making uh, drawings and characters. I just was fascinated by uh, characters, whether they were humans or birds or animals, uh, like you, Oliver. Yeah, yeah. It was like, and and I and I did that all the way through my childhood until finally, when I was uh, fourteen or thirteen, I saw Sesame Street on TV, and it blew me away. And I said, "Oh my gosh, I've got to make puppets like this." And so I started to actually copy uh, Jim Henson's puppets. So I had my copy of Kermit, Oscar the Grouch, um, Ernie, and uh, a few others. And my mom took a picture that was in the newspaper, cut it out, and sent the article to Jim Henson. Oh. And yeah, and it was unbelievable. I was only 14 years old. How old are you, Sandy? 14. <laughs> you are? Okay. So same age as you. Um, imagine that. So Jim Henson gets my newspaper article and writes back to me and okay. says, you um, have a lot of talent and a lot of skill. My mom, of course, wanted me to work for Jim Henson. And that's what she was doing. But he said, uh, you really have a lot of talent. You should make your own style of puppets and not copy ours. And don't call them Muppets, because back then, this was in the 70s, everybody that made a puppet called them Muppets because of the, the Sesame Street and the Muppet Show and all that. They didn't call them puppets anymore. They just called them Muppets. So the newspaper clipping uh, said Steve Axtell and his Muppets, which was wrong. But anyway, so I felt like I had hurt his feelings. Like, oh, my gosh, I insulted Jim Henson. By copying him. I was 14. You can imagine if you told me that you made a copy of Oliver and I said, hey, you know, you should find your own look. You, you might be like, oh, oh, no, Steve Axtell told me to do my own thing instead of copying him. You know, that feeling. So I stopped right away copying anything he did. And I started on my own journey to find my own look. And I got into that latex right there, that rubber head that you are holding in your hand. That was my material and i i learned how to do that through high school and my art teacher helped me and i got into that and i and i started off on a journey to make my own business and axtell expressions was born and it went on and on and on and i just always remembered that sesame street inspired me now here's where the story gets interesting said a few years ago i get a call from sesame street and one of the producers lewis mitchell says Mr. Axtell, we want you to know how much you inspire us. Uh, that is and so I said, cool. what? And he said, yeah. I mean, we watch your videos every day and 
they are so cool. And, and, uh, the platypus video was the one that really got them going. And, <laughs> and he says, in fact, I play that so much that people from Sesame street come into my office and say, stop playing that. <laughs> it's just so the, the song is so catchy and obnoxious anyway. Um, so it came full circle for me. That's kind of my cool story. That is insane. Oh my gosh. Um, you actually just brought a question into my mind here. You, you want to ask him? Sure. <laughs> now, how would he uh, know your question? How would Oliver know your question? Are you guys psychic? Here, here's the new show. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we have a new series going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here, uh, right. how about I let him know first? That's a good idea. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, there. Okay. I see the connection now. Oh, yes, yes, now I know. <clears throat> so, uh, how did you, uh, who, who wrote the, 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 the song? Ah! That was me. <laughs> and I wrote it, honestly, in the shower, the morning, <laughs> the morning that I shot the video. It's, I had a big weird. problem. <laughs> this was in 2008. I had a big, big problem with, um, uh, the economy at the time, we there were people were not, it was a crash, the Wall Street crash and, and all that was going on at the banking. And it was a very, very difficult time. And there weren't a lot of people buying puppets at that, that year. And I decided I got to do something because if I don't figure something out, I'm going to have to lay off my employees. And it was really difficult because I had a big crew of people that were making puppets. And so I got them all together and we said, hey, let's figure out what supplies we have here in the workshop that we could use to make puppets that we don't have to buy anything new. I don't have to place an order for hundred yards of some fur or something. Let's just see what we've got. And so people started bringing me things and they brought me a big roll of gray fabric that was really short and we hadn't used it for anything. Um, I had bought like 10 of those big, huge rolls. They were like this big around and like eight feet. Um, and they said, uh, you know, we need to figure out how to use this. So I, I was looking around the shop and there was a duck, uh, head over there and it was Chuck the duck. And I thought if I took that duck head and put it with this gray fur, I can make a platypus. <laughs> and, and they came up with a whole bunch of different things like the weasel, the wolf, um, platypus, different, different things we came up with. So I, I was really caught on the platypus because it's such a fun character that's so odd. So I posted on Facebook and I said, Hey guys, in my, in my Axtell entertainers group, I said, uh, come up with adjectives, uh, that describe a platypus. And so people were just posting crazy things, you know, like, well, web footed, you know, uh, <laughs> short fur, um, duck build, different things like that. So I was writing them all down. And then that morning I was thinking, oh my gosh, who in their right mind is going to want a platypus puppet? I need a song. I need a song. So I, I thought if I had a song, people would buy the puppet and sing that song. So I'm in the shower that morning and I'm thinking, platypus, platypus, platypus. Hey, that's, that's kind of hooky. And so I, I, I went with that and I, I came up with verses, chorus, and we shot that, um, we shot that that same day. Uh, so it was a simple little piano part. So that wasn't hard to put together. And uh, me and Greg Jackson, we put that song together, my, uh, my music guy, we did that same day. And it saved our company. So that year we started selling tons and tons of platypuses and that video went viral. Oh my goodness. That is so, that's awesome. <laughs> I must say your videos are just awesome. I, I'm so entertained by them. I love watching them. So what else do we have here? Oh, okay. So I have seen uh, Darcy Lynn with some of your puppets. I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of famous ventriloquists with your puppets. So uh, who else out there? Who else has them? Terry Fader is one of the biggest. Uh, he's a Las Vegas performer that won the fifth season of America's Got Talent. He uh, was, the, if not still, the highest paid entertainer in Las Vegas history. Oh and he is now, he was at the Mirage, and now he's at New York, New York. Uh, and he, we have a huge project. I think we're going to be doing 20 or so puppets for him on this next project, just <laughs> one project. 
I can't say any more about it, but it's so going to be okay. incredible. <laughs> Nuts. Oh, well, I look forward to hearing more about that. That's really awesome. Wow. <laughs> Oliver, you want to ask something? Sure. Hmm. Oh, I am very interested in your animatronics. How are those controlled? Oh, my gosh. They're controlled by servos and remote control or by your voice that goes into a microphone will control the mouth of the puppet. Similar to uh, what Sandy's doing right now. So she's using her mouth, even though you can't see it moving. And by the way, your technique is incredible. Oh, thanks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> can't see anything. Uh, I can never see your mouth move. It's really crazy. And, it, and it's really closed quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable, really. You really oh, are good. Goodness. At 14 years old, to have that kind of skill, you're going to go far, girl. Oh, yeah. Thank far. you so much. So oh, my gosh. I've always said that, and I mean it sincerely. You're really very, very talented. So just like she's putting her uh, voice into her hand and goes up and makes your mouth move, on our animatronics, you can talk into a microphone or you can play an MP3, and that audio signal will go into a servo that makes the mouth move of the puppet so a lot of our animatronics are done with what's called an easy talk and it's a really cool low-cost animatronic system that you can use with those uh, but otherwise we have huge projects like the frizzle chicken uh, farmhouse cafe in pigeon forge there's um, over a hundred chickens there and all of those are programmed uh, not by the same way that i just mentioned but fully programmed with wing flaps and everything and they sing songs all day long at that restaurant it's incredible Oh my goodness, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. Wow, I can't even imagine all the ideas running through your head all the time. I mean, oh, that's yeah. pretty wild. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. So what is your favorite part about performing? I mean, I imagine you have performed a lot with these puppets, right? Yeah, um, you know, when I started out, I was going to be a performer. And so um, I had to make a decision uh, when my kids came along, was I going to be a performer and travel and go to Vegas and go on cruise ships or be on TV or whatever? Um, or was I going to be home-based and make puppets instead of performing? And that's what I chose. So uh, I began, I had a lot of people that wanted to buy my puppets anyway, so I knew I could do it. And my wife, Susie, she said, let's go full-time with this. And we began making puppets and uh, selling them as the business. So now I only really perform on our show, Axtel, Inside Axtel, which is on Thursdays on uh, Axtel Expressions on Facebook. It's a live show. We do the first and third Thursdays of the month. And uh, also at conventions and things like that. That's about the only time I get to perform anymore is uh, just basically to show off our characters. Oh, I think everything that you do is incredible though. Um, Thank by you. the way, Thanks. Inside Axtel is so much fun. I watch Every time you go, um, you oh go my on. Gosh, how fun! That's so great. Yeah, I know you're on there a lot. Yes, I and, am. And um, and you've there. People can win things. That we have giveaways and we have auctions and sometimes we really have some pretty big prizes. So I hope I everybody comes. Yes, join. <laughs> um, when did you start doing that? We started it um, with an auction. Um, it was it was called Axtell's Attic. And that was, um, we did 60 or so weeks of that back when the pandemic started. And it was another way of surviving as a company. I had a ton of collectibles, like all this stuff back here, um, but I, a warehouse full. And so I began to auction those off and people loved the auctions. And so we, we kept doing that for quite a few months. And then we said, we don't want to, I, I was running out of stuff to you know auction. And uh, Ryan and I, we decided, we should just keep this up as a show and give more content instead of just selling stuff. We should just start interviewing people like you're doing now. And uh, it's going to be great to see where you go because you're doing, you're doing people that have inspired you, right? Yes. Yeah. That's going to be great. It's going to be great to see who has inspired you. You've had a lot of people and I, I know a lot of celebrities have answered your um, Instagram messages and stuff too. That's been fun. And Oh, it's so lucky. But you have so many incredible tips for performers on your website. And uh, are these all based on just experience or uh, where, where have you gotten these? Ah! <laughs> oh, so, so many tips have come from our customers. So um, uh, lots of the uh, tips have come from experience. You know, I've been doing this for 40 years 
And a lot of our uh, customers and, and the people that are performers that use our stuff are famous. And so I listen good. I listen to what they're saying and I see what they write and I collect them and then share them. And a lot of times people, and that's what we do on our show. So, you know, just like you, uh, if you learn something, you turn around and share it. If you don't, you're kind of hoarding and hogging and that's not what it's about. So how, how long have you been making puppets for? How many years has it been? Well, I, I started when I was 14, but actually uh, started the company as a complete uh, legal entity in 1982. So it became, it's next year, as soon as, as soon as January comes, we're going to be celebrating our 40th year. Wow. That's awesome. Years. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my god! It's gosh. a long time. I know. You must so we're really going to have some, me. we're going to have some specials and some surprises and all kinds of things all year long. It's going to be great. A fun year to be part of Axtell. Oh, I cannot wait to see yeah. all the posts. Um, hmm. All right, Oliver, you want to give it a go? Uh, yes. Okay. Hmm. All right. So uh, I see a lot of your designs online. So mm -hmm. What is it that goes into designing? Oh, man. Okay, so to, let me grab one. Uh, let's see. Let me grab this dinosaur. Okay, this dinosaur. Let's look at this. Okay, so this is a little dinosaur that I made. This is our dinky line, right? And these are like 100 bucks, so they're really affordable. And what I do is I sculpt this first. I sculpt the face. And I, sometimes I make drawings in my notebook, but sometimes I just start sculpting and I do this digitally. So I'm using a program, a software program called ZBrush and ZBrush is a 3D program. So I sculpted him in ZBrush uh, and I can rotate it around and I can see what it's gonna look like from all angles inside of ZBrush. And I can say, oh, I want the teeth to be a little longer and I can pull them down with my mouse and um, I'm using a tablet. But um, then I get, I get it complete. And then what I do is I, when I, when I like the design and the size and everything, I will print out a 3D mold and I'm using 3D printing um, and I'll do a negative mold. So when I cast the negative mold, it's a shape that fits around the face. I pour silicone inside the negative mold and pull out the head. And so now I can see it. I can put my hand in it now and I can move it around and go, oh yeah, that's good. And if it doesn't move right, I'll go back to ZBrush and make changes, print another negative mold and pull silicone out until it's right. So then in this case, um, I painted it, designed a little body for these. These are really simple bodies. Your hand goes right to the back of their head. They're real fun to make. Yeah, that's right. Really fun to make. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh, she is adorable. <laughs> Hi, Oliver. Hello, Oliver. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and uh and they're just really really fun and and my wife Susie does some of the body designs and works with me on some of the custom stuff and this has got fur on the hair and it's really really cool so now the big ones of course like uh Simon Cowell these, these were hand sculpted the bigger ones like let's get Simon here oh my gosh <laughs> this, Simon, this is the one this is the one I made for Darcy yes I've seen hello. that is so funny. Oh my gosh. Say hello, S Sandy. How are you, Sandy? <laughs> well, I'm good. <laughs> Congratulations. I think your golden ticket for that mouth control that you have there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you heard it from Simon. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of fun characters, but my most exciting things are what I'm doing next. I can't tell you about it because I'm working on a very, very secret project. Ooh, well, a big I, one with I'm Terry Fader and another one with um, a big park um, called Dollywood. All right. Wow. That sounds really awesome. I'm so excited to see what you post. Um, that is that is so cool. Um, I got to know. So what tips do you have regarding performance, puppet making for, you know, like a 14 year old girl with, you know, maybe long brown hair? Oh, um, <laughs> Well, a specific tip for a 14-year-old girl with long brown hair is to uh, learn all of the basics of performing and um, mold making. So, uh, or foam, um, foam construction. 
are, are you working with foam and fabrics? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's so many great um, instructors on YouTube. Uh, but if you want to pay for it and get a really good course, Barry Godemer, Handemonium. Barry Godemer is my favorite uh, designer for soft puppets that teaches, that he actually teaches. Landon Harvey's another great one. I love his work. And, uh, and uh, I don't know that uh, Landon is actually teaching so much as he is making them and showing how he makes them sometimes. And, uh, and there are, of course, the whole team at uh, Puppet Tears. Oh, wow. Adam Krutinger, um, uh, Puppet Tears. Uh, they, they make um, a whole series of how-to videos and, and they're ever, all the time coming out with uh, new uh, tutorials and things. And there's so many ways to learn how to make puppets. But ultimately, the advice like I got from Jim Henson was to find your own look and don't just make copies of what everybody else is making. Your puppets are absolutely incredible. So uh, thank, thank you, you so, much. so much for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and talking with us. You are you bet. just crap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. You're so good. And I look forward to seeing more of your podcast. Oh, well, you will see many. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you guys. Bye.